Hi guys, today we are going to continue with the chapter gravitation. So in the previous class you have learned how to calculate the force between any two objects in the universe that is force is equal to g into m1 m2 the whole divided by d square and we know that g is the universal gravitational constant and the value is 6.673 into 10 raised to minus 11 nm square kg minus 2. So um, now we learn uh, why it is called as a universal gravitational constant or why g is called as a universal universal gravitational constant. Can't it be just a gravitational constant? This is because if you try to calculate the force of any two objects in the universe, it is a constant. That is why it is called as universal gravitational constant. Now you know the value of it. So this unit that comes along with this whole number is called as the SI unit or international system of units. You must have learned that in the previous classes or chapters. Now, now we'll move on to a section where we'll find out how we get this SI unit. We know that the equation to find out the force is F equal to G into M1 M2 the whole divided by D square. Now we are going to calculate the SI unit for G. So to find out we have to keep this G in one area and bring all the other units to the other portion. So how do we do that? We multiply F into D the whole square and whole divided by M1, M2 we bring it down. So F D square becomes the numerator and m1 m2 becomes the denominator now we can calculate the si unit for g what is the si unit for force the si unit for force is newton so we apply all the si units the si unit for force is newton and the si unit for distance is meter si unit for mass is kilogram so we apply all these in this equation so we we get n m square the whole divided by kg into kg so it becomes kg square now we bring this kg the whole square on the numerator portion so this whole square becomes minus 2 so now the equation is converted into n m square kg minus 2 and that is the si unit for g now you must know that the unit for g is or the SI unit for G is nm square kg raised to minus 2. That is how we calculate the SI unit for universal gravitation constant. Now in the previous class you also learned that the moon rotates around the earth right and the force that helps the moon to rotate around the earth is the centripetal force. Now you must be wondering whether the moon also shows any sort of attraction towards it. Yes. Just imagine if the moon doesn't show any sort of attraction what will happen the earth will attract moon towards its center and the moon would fall on the earth but the uh, moon is also showing some sort of attraction so that it rotates around the earth we'll see how we know that the moon also shows some sort of attraction that is in this Newton's second law of motion, the mass is inversely proportional to acceleration. That means if the mass is higher, the acceleration is less. If the mass is less, the acceleration, acceleration is higher. So when compared to Earth, the moon has got smaller mass, so their acceleration is higher. But the mass of Earth is high, so that the acceleration is less. That is why we don't see the Earth getting attracted towards the moon because its mass is higher, so the acceleration or the movement is less. Now we'll move on to the next problem. Now the question is what happens to the force when the mass of one object is doubled. So applying this question in the formula 
force is equal to g into m into m the whole divided by d square we are applying this question in this formula so we are doubling the mass of one object so just take an example like m and we are du doubling it so it becomes 2m so the formula is changed into f equal to g into 2 into m into m the whole divided by d square and we are arranging rearranging a little bit and we are putting this 2 at the front so it becomes 2 into g into m into m the whole divided by d square so what is g into m into m the whole divided by d square it is f right force the formula of force is g into m into m the whole divided by d square so we apply this equation over here and it becomes 2f so that means the force is also doubled so when the mass of one object is doubled the force of the the force applied over there is also doubled now the second situation is what happens to the force when the distance between the two object is doubled so we apply that same equation over here also so the formula for f is g into m into m the whole divided by 2d that is it is being the distance being between two objects is doubled so it becomes 2d the whole square so the next equation is g into m into m the 2 whole 2 the whole square is 4 and d square so the equation becomes g into m into m the whole divided by 4 d the whole square now we are rearranging the equation and we write 1 by 4 at the beginning and rest of the equation together so 1 by 4 into g into m into m the whole divided by d square that is f so we apply f over here and it becomes 1 by 4 into f or f by 4 that means the 4 is being decreased 4 times so when the distance between two objects is doubled what happens is that the force is decreased 4 times now this is a problem now we have we should know what is the use of the universal law of gravitation what is the universal law of gravitation that is f equal to g into m into m the whole divided by d square what are the uses of it so the first one is that it helps us to bind to the earth we are able to stand walk and everything on the surface of the earth because of this universal law of gravitation now the second one is the rotation of moon around the earth and also the rotation of planets around the sun this is all due to the universal law of gravitation and the last one is the tides that are developed due to the rotation of moon and sun